hope Sandra Bullock doesn't give them back. <laughs> The following is a presentation of HB.0 Sports. Fall has begun, and the Tosh.0 team returns to the office, rejuvenated after the offseason. Tuck in your shirt! But not everyone on staff has maintained peak physical condition. Head rider Nick Malice has come to camp 20 pounds overweight. Tosh knows he must handle the situation delicately. You are fat as f Tosh wastes no time putting his staff through its paces. Uh, except for me, I'm sure you were all a little rusty. So let's get to work. After four seasons and countless internet videos, the team struggles to find the right clips. We're never going to use that on the show. That's not for us. Uh, no! Idiot. No. Come on. Up your game. Uh, no! Nobody cares about produce. You know what, send me that link. Improvement is needed, and Tasha's impossibly high standards cause some to crack under the pressure. That's garbage! Keep going! Dig! 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 Right! 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 Give me something, come on, come on, dig deep. There you go, right, right. Why are you guys coming forward? Don't you know a jogging place? Come on, knees up. With tape day approaching, Tosh attempts to motivate his team with some inspiring words. His poor effort from every one of you, excluding me. If we do that next week, Sons of Anarchy is gonna destroy us in the 18 to 24 male demo. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Then play like it matters. Hit the showers. After a tense morning, Tosh brightens the mood with some lighthearted hazing of the rookie riders. <laughs> but things get serious when it's time to make the first cut of camp. Come on in, have a seat. And you know what this is, right? We're letting you go. Now, this isn't the end for you. I gotta call my grandma. <laughs> call your grandma. Weirdo. No, hold on, the, the pro problem is you're writing cursive. I don't like to read cursive. No one likes to read cursive. I'm gonna have to ask you to turn in your marker. It's been a pleasure working for you. Okay, you gotta go. Where was this? With team morale at an all-time low and tension mounting, Tosh hits the studio early for the final preseason episode. And three, two, one. Welcome back to Tosh.0. Oh. Perfect. Second string. Don't be too funny. Veteran backup host Dom Herrera can't wait for his last shot at green screen glory. Comedy Central doesn't feel that I appeal to the younger demographic. Tell that to the 18-year-old twins I fingered last night. For Daniel Tosh, each new day means a chance to improve. Despite the fame, women, money, cars, men, world tours, cartoon shows, Goldman Sachs accounts, and designer dogs. Tosh is still the last one out of the door each night. It's the only way he knows. Auburn looking for its first home conference win since 2014. Could be worse, she could have been at Baylor. That's Ashley, and if we go to the replay, we will see that she did not have it. This is what happens when you're on the sideline at the Auburn LSU game and you think you can shag kickoffs from a Lou Groza Award finalist.
We interrupt our normal hysterical show with a Tosh.0 exclusive. I have just received an illegal copy of New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft's sex tape. But airing it will hopefully get me blackballed from show business. I've been told by my legal dream team it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So here it is for your Emmy consideration, the Robert Kraft sex tape. ESPN, with the express written consent of the NFL, presents the 30 for 30 documentary, Ejacugate. Stunning charge, the billionaire owner of the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft. Caught up in a sex sting in South Florida. Soliciting prostitution. Robert Kraft paid a prostitute. Human trafficking. Paying for and receiving sex. He was twice videotaped. <laughs> a billionaire flew from Boston to Jupiter, Florida. Get jerked off by some 40-something woman in a strip mall hours before the AFC Championship game. I can't even imagine the sick shit he was doing before the divisional round. Orchards is uh, pretty filthy, but it's the second nicest Jack Shack in Jupiter. Probably wouldn't go there if it weren't so close to my favorite liquor store. Just give me one small fee, two pre-season tickets, 300 level. What this boils down to is human sex trafficking. The New England Patriots support human sex trafficking. It is what it is. I've had it up to here. Spygate, Deflategate, Aaron Hernandez, Russell Wilson throwing the Super Bowl, and now Bob Kraft's rub and tug. Boston doesn't want the Patriots anymore. I hope he sells the team to OKC. He wore six rings and said things like, I'm the Patriots owner Robert Kraft, which made it real easy to identify him. Because I'm a Dolphins fan, people are going to call me a hater. You're right. I hate human sex trafficking. I also hate the people of New England, but not as much as I hate human sex trafficking. Before the massage, he insisted the masseuse kiss his championship rings. Bam, bam, bam! F***ing balls on that mother And I got to his office, fully prepared to suck his Mr. Kraft wasn't able to achieve an erection until the sex worker put on a Tom Brady jersey. As I stated in my report, it wasn't a firm erection. It was more like a raw chicken tender. I am a season ticket holder. So in a way, I feel like I have been paying for these hand jobs. You don't want to go in the room after Robert Kraft. No, it smells like uh, something died in his balls. Human sex trafficking. I thank God we didn't get audio. It bothered me a lot more a long time ago. Now, after 17 years of it, I have healthy boundaries. The last 20 years have been forever tainted. Might as well give back the rings. At least we got our chowder in the socks down at the harbor with the wicked Matt Damon. <laughs> Sam Adams, too. When you come to Florida, look at our alligators. Enjoy our space program. But don't jizz on victims of human sex trafficking. I lost my family. i tell you who really got jerked off that day. Every young football fan. I mean, in a roundabout way, Bob Kraft jerked off children. That's his legacy. Next week on 30 for 30, what if I told you Mark Wahlberg spent 45 days in prison for robbing and blinding a Vietnamese man? Derek Jeter presents Mark Wahlberg did a hate crime. Did I mention human sex trafficking? When the real tape inevitably comes out, I vow to air it every single week until I'm canceled. Oh, I hope Sandra Bullock doesn't give him back. Now you know why they call them special teams. 
No, he doesn't play for the Raiders. He plays for the Las Vegas Cobras, a semi-pro football team where you get none of the fame and fortune, but all of the higher risk for Parkinson's. If your job requires you to wear a helmet, nobody should expect you to be mentally sharp. He tackled his own teammate, big deal. It's not like he shot himself. Or a dog. Or bit a strip club bouncer. Or smoke the sticky icky icky. Oh, Ricky. Or is Ray J's wiener cousin. You have to be willing to forgive. I don't care if they read at a fifth grade level. If you can read a defense and not blow my three game parlay, you're okay in my book. It's a violent game with serious consequences. Playing football qualifies you for only three things later in life. Coaching football, analyzing football, or successfully murdering your ex-wife and her boyfriend. <laughs> Corey was just a kid chasing his dreams in front of an announced crowd of 79 at a Vegas middle school. So we brought him to LA to give him another chance to smear the <laughs> in this week's Web Redemption. <laughs> Corey! Hey, how you doing? What's up? Just out here in my game jersey. Oh, really? Yeah. Game jersey? When you got abs like this, you don't hide them. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I won't say nothing. I don't know how to do that very well. First of all, did you win that game? Yeah, we won that game. We won by like three touchdowns. Tell me what you do for a living. Uh, I'm a lab technician. I work inside of a hospital. That is not the answer I thought I was going to get. I know you were. Would you want me to say I was a cake decorator? No. I just, when I saw you tackle your own teammate, I was like, I, I, I didn't think, oh, that's a lab technician, clearly. Yeah. What position do you play? Defense, a tackle, and a linebacker. Are you always on special teams, too? No. I just I happens to win out on that one day. Are you serious? Yes. I've never, never done it before. That, okay, that, that's like one way to make sure you don't play anymore. Yeah, exactly. Are you colorblind? I'm not colorblind. I got that question a lot, too. What were the type of comments people posted online? What the hell was you thinking? Were you on drugs? Um, who was you trying to impress? Like, your, no. your, re your instant reaction my uh, seemed pretty honest. My instant reaction, I seen a guy with a ball, he was running towards me, and I tackled him. It was an accident. It was a clear accident. Do you have any other good plays that game? Um, actually, no. That was my best play. <laughs> <laughs> that was my best play. <laughs> Good. A lot of girls wouldn't sit like this. They would be self-conscious of that, not me. We want to give you a chance to redeem yourself. We're just going to run you through a few combine drills. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're ready. Give you another chance to block. All right. What's your 40 time? Four, I think it's four or five, four or six. I think I can beat that. How much do you bench? Um, 385. No, nah, I know I can beat that. <laughs> Corey, welcome to the Taj Mahal. <laughs> Woo! I just feel fast right now. Probably because I'm wearing all black. All right, Corey, let's check your vertical. Ugh. Huh. Did not want it to be that high. Oh, my goodness. You know what else is good? What? Laying stereotypes to rest. As many as you can get. Good thing I'm here to spot. I, no, I get it. You're stronger than I am. Parachute on my back. Life is a parachute. All right, Corey. It's time for you to block for me. I'm going to return a punt against the reigning women's professional football team, the California Quake. Oh, it is going to be hard to play without an erection. Hey, I'm oh, dreading the game. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm not good at getting you jazzed up, so I thought it'd be great to bring an all pro Super Bowl champion, Mr. Bill Romanowski, to help you. Oh, okay. Bill? Hey. Hey, how you doing? We're here for one reason. You know what that is? All right. That's to knock the crap out of somebody. Yes, sir. You hear me? Yes, sir. Are you ready to knock the out of somebody? Yes, sir. Or are you really ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's what go. What time is it? Game time. What time is it? Game time. The world wants to know. Are you ready to give another shot? Yes, sir. Let's, Let's go. go. Oh, my God. Oh, I caught it. Don't tackle me. <laughs> this does not look good. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. 
Romanowski hit me. Hot! Oh. Stuntman! <laughs> and by stuntman, I mean writer. Hit the s out of him, Bill. Trying to get our two boys ready to carry them to the golf tournament for practice, right? <laughs> Twelve cats live across the road. Our door's open. Screen's broke. We need to get a new screen door, but the screen's broke. So you can come in through the screen, but you can't get back out of it. I turn and look, there's a little kitty cat in our, in our kitchen. So I said, what are you doing in here, little kitty cat? By that time, eh, the cat turns, tries to get back out. That screen won't go that way. Cat starts going meow, all crazy. And I told our players, we need more dogs. Bo's barking in the back. I have to go shut Bo up. Mel's like, what's going on? I said, it's a cat in the house. Cat in the house? I said, yeah, there's a cat in the house. So I told our players, I tried to let it out the front door. Meow, meow. The cat's still going crazy in there. And I told our players, you need to be more like a dog. We don't need a bunch of cats in here. Meow, looking in the mirror. Do I look good? I got my extra bands on. I got my other shoes on. Be a dog. We don't need no meows. We don't need no cats. We need more dogs. I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but that's Coach Dave Bennett of the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. With inspiring words like this, you know where this press conference will end up. Now, I told our players, you need to be more like a dog. Hey, Coach, I think you need to be a little more specific. There's tons of dogs with a varying degree of aggression. Be a dog. Now, pit bulls, Coach. Ooh, pit bulls are good. That's a fierce animal. Problem is they're inbred now. A lot of them are uh, predisposed to hip dysplasia. That's not gonna be good for your offensive line. He should have said, be like a monkey. You want to be like a monkey, because monkeys are a lot stronger than humans. Everyone knows that. Cat in the house. Cat in the house? I said, yeah, there's a cat in the house. Coach, what, what's so bad about being a cat anyhow? I mean, if it's a house cat, sure, but what if it's a cheetah or, or a lion? Actually, a lion isn't the best uh, example. It's the smaller cats that do the killing, like cheetahs, things like that, and then lions just come in, they scare the cheetah away, and then they eat. I see. Well, well They're a very well, selfish animal. Well, the point is, Coach, that any of these things would slaughter a dog. Meow, meow. You're being a f***ing lunatic. Meow. Let's plug this beer so we can end this commercial. Ah, there it is. Awful beer in a can. What are you doing in here, little kitty cat? Hey, here's an idea. Why not try making it taste less like uh, instead of inventing a super wide double vortex vent so you can pour it down your gullet even faster. Be a dog. You can hear the silver bullet train coming. That's what you get for being a cat up there. You need to be a dog. <laughs> It's not funny. She's gonna be out four to six weeks with a broken spirit. Get up. That's called Tebowing, and it's one more reason to hate Tim Tebow. Before and after every game, he takes a knee and reflects with God. But if Tebow is really a good Christian, he'd honor the Sabbath and keep it holy by not working every Sunday. I get that Tebow's a leader on the field, but you know who'd be even better in the huddle? A professional quarterback. He's not a passer who's a threat to run. He's a tight end who lines up in the Wildcat. He seemed good in college because he was shot putting six yard dump screens to a safety valve. Oh, he won the Heisman, great. So did Charlie Ward, and he sat on the Knicks bench for eight years. He's the only athlete who brags about being a virgin. At least Tony Romo bangs dudes. 
<laughs> Knock it off with the Bible verses and abstinence talk. I have it on good authority that your V-card got swiped plenty down in Gainesville. <laughs> Denver is better off without him, but try telling that to a stadium full of Chanting Hill people. <laughs> Everyone is T-bowing these days, but I don't think they understand what it really means. When you drop down and pray like him, it should be after you've done something awful, because that's what Tim Tebow represents. <laughs> Being awful. Nice throw, Tebow. Okay, if it's fat, drunk, and slow, yeah. it must be Chicago. Da, oh. 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 Paul. Did he get the first down? No, oh, go for it. <laughs> the Bears could use that pole at safety. You can't expect people who put an entire pickle spear on their hot dogs to be athletic. Oh. What are you it was either run face first into a pole or talk to a girl with a Midwestern accent. I say you made the right call. If you want a really easy win, race a Packers fan. On your mark, get set. Two dogs, heavy crowd, chili, uh, noodle onions. Put some cheese on it. Put another dog on top of that dog. Uh, maybe put some peppers. Some jalapeno peppers. All right, that looks like a, is that a Dijon? You lost. <laughs> Here's a question, Packers fans. If your hats are made of cheddar, how come they have the holes of Swiss? You think people who got that fat off cheese would know the difference? <laughs> It's time to get serious. There is no body better, and there is no other high school six-man football team that is hungrier than these guys. Thailand, Italy, well, Jesus Rodriguez. If he looks familiar, it's because he used to star on that show Rugrats. That's Chad, and he makes motivational videos to fire up his beloved high school football team, the Knox City Greyhounds, which appears to be in a high radiation area of Texas. <laughs> high school football is a religion in Texas because anything is better than watching Tony Romo shit the bed season after season. If a high school football game is the most interesting thing to do on a Friday night, you should burn your town to the ground. <laughs> I just want everybody to know that I'm opposed to an unauthorized biography for anybody. You know, one of these days when I'm finished coaching in Alabama, I'll write an authorized book. Because, you know, there's really only one expert on my life. And guess who that is? Me. What could a man with a horrible temper and zero sense of humor have to hide? Well, if he doesn't want me to read it, I know what I'll be doing in my spare time. All right, kids, today we're gonna read the biography of Nick Saban. Ooh, it starts off with a quote from Nick Saban himself. Football is not Hamlet, it's not tragedy, it should be fun. Tell it to your face. <laughs> Saban, who was then the head coach of the Dolphins, had publicly denied any interest in the Alabama job over and over and over. Well, guess I can close the book. There's no way he's going to Alabama. A man is only as good as his word. Keep, Keep reading. reading! Saban knew how it would look if he left the Dolphins after just two seasons. He would be called a liar, a failure, and a quitter. Say it with me, kids. A liar, liar a, a failure, failure, and a quitter. But the decision wasn't his alone. Uh, yes, it was. Nobody gives a shit 
what your wife thinks. Wayne Huizinga was paying you millions of dollars. You don't even give a f about your wife. You know why she wanted out. She felt ugly in Miami. And if you want to feel smart, sexy, and special, you surround yourself with thousands of toothless townies in Tuscaloosa. And she also believed that a college town was a much healthier place to raise their two children. Didn't his daughter Kristen almost murder someone with her bare hands? Yes, yes she did. Saban says, in the NFL, you were penalized for success. What success? Exactly. The NFL barely penalizes wife beaters. I'm pretty sure they'd be okay with back-to-back -back playoff appearances. Saban had a choice between Drew Brees and Dante Culpepper. He's gonna try to say, oh, the medical people advise me. He wants to take no responsibility for picking Dante Culpepper over Drew Brees. Drew Brees won a Super Bowl. Culpepper, knowing his career was being ruined, shouted at Saban, you better get your short mother away from me, you lying mother Let's be honest. He killed Culpepper's career. Culpepper was the co-MVP of the league. The other co-MVP was Steve McNair, who was killed by his mistress who worked at Dave & Buster's. Well, I, I believe that's true. Saban is five feet eight inches tall. So is he a lady? Saban's go-to gesture when he was really angry was to reach his hand back to grab his own butt cheek. Was he checking his own oil? Oh, ooh, ooh. Saban still eats two Little Debbie oatmeal cream pies every morning as he drinks coffee. Here you go. They're his favorites. Ugh. You know what's in these things? High fructose corn syrup. This is poor people food. So how does the story end? He had an asshole father, now football's too fast, he's a piece of shit. the end.